Good morning, and thank you very much for coming to Toronto Police Headquarters. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Detective Sergeant Graham Gibson of the Homicide, and he will be speaking to us about Homicide Number 42 for 2014. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, today, I'm going to be updating you on Homicide Number 42 from 2014, and it's the murder investigation into uh, the death of Mr. Andrew Surridge. Uh, sorry, Mr. Suraj, I believe is the correct uh, pronunciation. Uh, Mr. Surich was 47 years old at the time of his death, and uh, he was married, and he had children as well. He worked for 10 years as a route manager for interstate batteries servicing car dealerships, and he had no contact with the police. I'm going to be showing you some video surveillance uh, today taken from the night of the uh, homicide. Uh, it's been cobbled together from different video cameras that we've had uh, the, uh, we've been able to look at. So I've tried to put together the best images of the persons of interest and suspect that I could find. But before I show you that, I'm just going to go back a little bit and just fill you in on the actual occurrence of what happened uh, back on October 5th. So on Saturday, October 4th, Mr. Surridge was out with his friends and they had been attending several get-togethers to celebrate and they ended up at an after-hours club in the early morning hours of Sunday, October 5th. Now this after-hours club is located at 325, that's 325 Weston Road in Toronto. Uh, it's not licensed to serve alcohol and it's commonly known as Whispers and uh, more recently and at the time of the homicide it was called uh, Captain Social Club but most people still call it uh, Whispers. So Mr. Suraj, Suraj attended there with his friends and immediately uh, they didn't like the atmosphere of this place and they decided to leave after a drink. Uh, so after a short time, they left and around 5.40 in the morning on the 5th, Mr. Uh, Suraj's friend was approached by the male suspect. Uh, this male suspect proceeded to rob his friend of some jewelry and uh, it was a chain actually. Uh, he, so he was assaulted, robbed, and Mr. Surridge came to his friend's aid and basically asked the suspect to return the chain to leave his friend alone. The suspect refused to do so and he quickly left the area and at about 542 video surveillance captures an image of the suspect returning to the area and uh, he produced a handgun and shot Mr. Surridge. He then left the scene in a vehicle that he had arrived in. So you're gonna see images of the uh, vehicle, of their arrival, uh, images of the three people that are with the suspect. It's two males and a female. The uh, cause of death, uh, Mr. Surridge, was a, a gunshot wound to the chest. And uh, as I mentioned, video surveillance was collected from the scene. And uh, I'll be showing you images of the three, sus three uh, persons of interest in the suspect. So what I'm asking is that members of the public, if you were there that night and you recognize these people, if you've seen them, uh, associates of these people, if you know them, or anybody who might be able to identify them, if you can uh, have a look at this video and, uh, and call me and I'll give out my contact information. Now before I start, I just wanted to let you know that there are certain portions of this video where the clothing of the uh, persons of interest and suspect appear light. I believe it's because of the, either the lighting or the, ca or the camera used or a combination thereof. I believe they're wearing dark clothing and you'll see a representation of both. And uh, I'll draw your attention to the camera that I believe slightly alters the clothing and you'll see that it appears quite white. But investigation has shown that they were wearing dark clothing at the time. The suspect can be best described as being non-white but with light skin, between 5'10 and 6 feet tall, with a muscular build. He had black curly hair, and you can see a small ponytail at the back. And as I mentioned, he's wearing dark clothing, including a hoodie. The timing on the video is something I wanted to mention too before I start. When you see the vehicle arrive, the time is actually correct. And when you see the vehicle leave, the camera uh, captures the correct time. Some of the times in between of the footage is actually off. I'm not gonna get into how much it's off, but we've been able to look at it and determine where everything falls into place. So uh, if you can start the surveillance video. 
The first images I'm gonna show you show the suspect and the three persons of interest arriving at the parking lot at the after hours located at 325 Western Road. That's the vehicle coming in right now. And we believe this to be a purple 1998 Honda Accord. So it enters the parking lot off of Weston and it proceeds to reverse into a parking spot. Now the club in question is further down the way from where this vehicle is parking, so it would be to the left of the screen, but you can't see it in this image. The next clip is going to show you uh, the person of interest number one, and he exits the front passenger side of the car, and then you're going to see person of interest number two exiting the left passenger side, and he's going to walk towards the security camera. You'll see actually his jacket get a little lighter as he moves towards the camera, which illustrates what I was talking about. The third clip shows person of interest number one, and you're going to see him at the bottom left of the screen. Very quick. Clip number four is going to show person of interest number two walking back toward the car. And as he does, person of interest number one walks past him, and he's going to walk to a nearby parked car and urinate. And then you're going to see person of interest number one quickly walk past the security camera. And this clip is going to show all four subjects as they walk past the security camera. You're going to see person of interest number two, number three. And that's a female who also arrived with the males. I didn't show a clip of her getting out, but she does arrive with them. The suspect and person of interest number one, all heading to the area of the after hours club. And that's the camera that I talk about that lightens their clothing quite a bit. And you can see the clothing here is back to the, uh, the darker clothing. Person of interest two, one, suspect and three, and they're now approaching the club. This next clip is going to show the suspect at this front and person of interest number three passing by a camera as they head back toward their vehicle. They went back and forth a couple of times throughout the night. And then you're going to see person of, under, person of interest number three, the female and the suspect, walk back to the club. This clip is going to show person of interest number two and the suspect walk by a surveillance camera. Once again, you can see the dark clothing, except for the white shirt on person of interest. The next clip is going to show the suspect walking, walking back towards his car. Now, this is just prior to the shooting. You're going to see him look back toward the direction of the club. Now, the robbery has already taken place off camera, and you're just going to see person of interest number two following at a distance. And in the next clip, they're going to pass by a security camera on their way back to the car. I believe it was at this point that the suspect was retrieving a handgun uh, to return to the scene of the area where he robbed uh, Mr. Siraj's friend. That's him walking past a security camera as well, followed by the person of interest. And then you're going to see an image of the suspect walking back toward the area where Mr. Siraj is. So it's at this point that we believe he's armed, and then you're going to see him in the area of the parking lot. And what he's doing is he's, we believe he's looking for Mr. Siraj and his friend. So you see him on the right side of the screen. Now in the next image, the murder has already happened. And you're going to see an image of um, the suspect with a gun in his hand, in his right hand. And the final images are going to show the suspect as he runs back towards his vehicle, the Honda Accord. He's going to get in it and start, start the vehicle. And he's going to flee the parking lot. Now, there's two citizens that you see at the top of the screen walking past. And you'll see later on that he almost strikes the two of them as he leaves. 
he does in fact strike a parked car as he makes his getaway. There he is striking the vehicle. He heads out onto Weston Road and turns right. So that concludes the images that I wanted uh, you to see today. And again, uh, I'm repeating myself, but I'd like to hear from anybody who was down there that night. We've spoken to a lot of people. We continue to attempt to track down people who are attending the nightclub. And uh, if you were down there and you saw these, these people uh, and it didn't tweak anything with you, but seeing these images now helps, give me a call. And uh, if you do know these people, if they look familiar to you, uh, give me a call and uh, we can talk. My phone number is 416-808-7400, extension 77405. Thank you. How much cooperation are you getting from the club owners? Uh, the club owner was cooperative on the night of the investigation. And they don't have any security cameras? Um, I'm not going to discuss anything to do with uh, images that may or may not have been inside the club. That's hold back for now. How cooperative are the people who are in the club? The, the associates of the deceased that were there were cooperative. They gave us statements. Unfortunately, most of the people who were there that night fled uh, prior to the police's arrival. We have been going through uh, tracking down people that we have been able to. Um, we did have license plates and we're working through that list. Um, I feel at this stage of the investigation, it's appropriate to put this out to the public and see if anybody can assist in identifying them. Just to clarify, the arrival, when you see the first video of the car arriving and then the people getting out, was the suspect in the car at that time? Yes, he was driving oh. it. And have you been able to find the license plate of that car? Um, I'm not going to be getting into that right now. As I stated, we do believe that it's a 1998 Honda Accord, purple in color. Yeah, his friends just stated that it. They, were, they felt they were a little bit older. It was a younger crowd. They just didn't like the feeling or the vibe of the club, so they decided they'd stay for a drink and then leave. Um, and from what I understand, they did have one drink and then decide to leave. It's not that they felt unsafe. It just wasn't. It just wasn't for them, and that's why they decided to leave. Robbery. Yes. And then he goes back. So is this some kind of issue like disrespecting or what's going on here? It's hard for me to say. It would be speculation. As you see, there's no audio on the video, and I can only rely on the witnesses. Um, I don't know what words were exchanged or why the suspect felt that he had to come back, but uh, he did. And, uh, and like I say, I, I can't comment on why he felt he needed to, to come back and do that. It, to me, it's a, uh, it's a cowardly act, Mr. Surge and his friends were by all means peaceful, but they didn't have any weapons on them. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason why he felt he had to come back and, and shoot Mr. Siraj. When, when the victim was asking uh, the gunman to return his friend's jewelry, the necklace, was that, did that become physical or was it just words? Not, not that I understand, no, no. From all accounts, he was basically saying, come on, give him back his, his stuff and just leave him alone. He came to his friend's aid. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.